Good morning, good morning, and welcome to a fantastic, chilly, foggy morning here in North Yorkshire. Do you know, it just feels ages since I've been out with the camera. I mean, it's probably at least two weeks, something like that. Um, our life has just been taking over. We've been very busy house hunting, trying to move home because we, I could do with a little bit more space for work. That uh, just sort of seems to have dominated my time recently. So it's fantastic to be back out with the camera, back out with Meg and into the woods again. And this is a real treat this morning too, because this is one of my favorite woodlands in my local area. And I've waited at least two and a half years to experience it in fog like this. So this is a real early Christmas treat for me, I think. Uh, it's just it's just brilliant, but it's not perfect. Nothing ever is really, but uh, it's, it's, it's great to be out, but there are some issues to watch out for. So we've got these patches of half melted snow, just these thin layers here and there. And that could potentially cause a bit of distraction in some of the images. Uh, and I also have to be careful not to kind of blow out those brighter white areas too. So um, it is something that is potentially an issue in an image that I'm working on here. But at the same time, those kind of patches of snow kind of help to give it that chilly, wintry feel as well, which I quite like. And that kind of cooler feel contrasts quite nicely with the fantastic kind of mosses that are lingering on this tree here. So those, that green coming through, I think, is going to be really quite nice. Now, I talked before about going into the woods and not looking for trees to keep your mind open to, to other opportunities. But this is very much about the tree. It's just, and the, well, the shapes, it's just a fantastic character. Got its main trunk which splits and then curves round and creates this fantastic shape. And then this lovely twist of the branches kind of, uh, you know, going in the opposing directions in the middle of this. And loads of twisty, gnarly shapes everywhere else. It's complex, it's, it's very difficult just to get that right position because there's a lot going on in the background as well. So I'm trying to separate things as much as possible. It's impossible to separate everything, but that doesn't matter because the fog is just making this main subject stand out, come to the fore. And it's also removing some of the potential distractions which you could see in the distance when the fog isn't here. So uh, I'm going to opt for a square crop, I think. Uh, I think that works well. A 5-4 will also work, um, but I really just, I don't want any too much left or right. I just really want to kind of concentrate on the fantastic shapes, character, form and flow of this tree here. Just, uh, yeah, a be beautiful tree and quite a simple shot, really. So I think it feels as if the fog set in for a while, uh, which is great. So hopefully I'll get a couple more images in before it starts to lift. Uh, Meg's on alert there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why she's not running around trying to find things, but uh, yeah, she's been very well behaved this morning. Right, I'll get that one and uh, see what else I can find. So like I said, I've been waiting a long time to experience these glorious atmospheric conditions in this particular woodland. I have had some other successful trips down here just under heavy rain and flat light, and I've visualized various images and scenes, but some of those are probably better suited to spring and autumn time. So I'm completely open to, to new things today, and I have spotted something which I quite like actually, it's a little bit different. We've just got these series of these mossy oak trees just at the just before the hills drops off steeply into the riverbank 
So these are just hanging over. I think in the background, we've got some snow on the opposite hillside and there's a few kind of older trees down there as well. And what struck me was this quite nice interaction between some of these trees. So right in the middle, there's these two big long reaching oak trees and they just clash. So yeah, it just feel, feels like a bit of a combat. And then there's this other more uniform oak tree just in the middle of all this. And he just sort of feels like a bit of an umpire, a bit of a referee in the situation. Um, so yeah, I quite like it. It's a nice interaction. Um, but because of those long reaching branches, I'm going to go for a 16 by nine crop just to kind of emphasize that reach as well. And I think what feels better balanced for me is if I'm including the clump of oak trees over on the left hand side, I'm getting that clash of the branches more or less in the middle. And then I'm not going to include the tree over on the far right hand side, I don't think. I'm quite happy for that to just disappear and just have the branches reaching in. And that's, that's fine, you know, I don't want to kind of tell the whole story. Happy to leave a little bit to the imagination because the mind will fill in the gaps. It's more about the reach the kind of referee there and that clash of the branches in the middle which I quite like. In fact some of it's almost too foggy, I shouldn't really say that, but it is almost too foggy. Um, but yeah, see how that turns out. Quite like that and dare I say that for some reason I never, you know, I never ever shoot black and white because I like, I like colour, I like, um, I think colour is part of the experience of the landscape and if the landscape is naturally monochromatic then that's great. But I don't know, for some reason I'm looking at this thinking, hmm, could make quite a nice black and white. And I think it's because of that band of snow in the background as well. It makes it easier to deal with that. Um, but yeah, we'll have a look at that. And one more photograph would be nice, I think. I'm a little bit limited on time. Um, so yeah, little wonder, try and get one more in from this, this small area here. Right, so I found a third image which I quite like. It's more of a, a woodland scene, this one. And for me, it works well, again, with that 16 by nine aspect ratio. I'm a big fan of that crop in woodland. I just find that cinematic view to be quite immersive sometimes. And like I said before, really, it's the scene, you know, our connection with the scene, what we sort of see as the best qualities and what we want to achieve with it. You know, we should be allowing the scene to help dictate to us what the composition should be and what the aspect ratio should be. And it just so happens that the 16 nine works quite well here. So basically what we've got is a lovely bald oak tree just off centre to the left, just through the gap there. That's, some of those branches are just catching the light quite nicely. There's some nice ferns growing around its bald base as it's leaning off the sort of steep hillside and hanging over the river down below. Um, there's a more uniform, um, a straighter tree over just off centre to the right. And that's absolutely fine, but some of the other trees are more interesting in terms of the shape and the moss. There is a tree that's kind of leaning off on the left and then disappearing off the right hand side. But I'm okay with that because right over on the right hand side of the frame I've got one which kind of has a lovely curve to it which just helps to draw you back in I think. And I'm framing off the left hand side with some more mossy laden branches. There is a big boulder down in the bottom right hand corner. I was, I was a bit unsure about that at first. I wasn't mad keen on having the boulder there. However, it's better to have it there than not, otherwise it'd be this kind of big open gap. So I'm just going to work with that. There's a bit of, bit of sky coming in, but because it is so foggy, that kind of transition from the darker branches and the treetops into the sky should remain quite soft. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, there's a band of snow across the bottom, that kind of half melted snow. And again, I don't mind that, it just helps to kind of give that um, cool feeling to it and is it does feel particularly chilly quite right now my fingers are a little bit chilly 
but I've tried to keep that consistent with that band of snow across the bottom which feels quite nicely balanced with some of the brighter fog at the top of the image so yeah absolutely fine with that and I think what's also quite nice is over on the right hand side some of the trees there were actually included in the last image so there is a bit of a connection there I could even see the first photograph that I took that lovely shaped tree in the distance there and so really I'm still working in very small areas a lot more woodland to play with but just concentrating on a, a little a little pocket of it on each visit is, is really quite nice so yeah uh, I haven't got a lot of time left I do need to get back I might hopefully I might see something else but if not really quite content with what I've got so far I think Right, I'm afraid that's me done for this morning. I need to get back and do a bit of video editing and admin work. But what a fantastic morning to be out. Just peace, quiet, solitude, and just brimming with atmosphere as well. Like I said, a real treat to see this woodland in fog for the first time. Uh, now, I'm not entirely sure when this video is going out. I imagine Christmas has probably been and gone now. So I hope you had a fantastic Christmas. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you very much for all the fantastic support throughout 2019, all the kind comments, shares, the very generous donations, uh, the purchase of bottles, prints, and people coming on workshops, it really does mean a lot to me. And also the amazing support for Meg's Grove through Trees for Life. That's worked out so well with probably about 1,600 trees now, uh, which is just really is fantastic. So yeah, thank you very much. I want to wish you and yours all the very best for 2020. I'll hopefully see you a lot through a lot through next year and perhaps and hopefully many years to come. But yeah, thank you very much indeed. All the best. And as always, I hope to see you for the next episode.